Your love. Hey everybody, I'm gonna wait just a moment to see who signs on. Um, got something on my heart today I wanna talk about. I've got some questions from some people uh, recently about is it a sin for us not to go to church during this quarantine? And you can see behind me, Lowe's is uh, not forsaking their assembly together. There's a lot of people that are in Lowe's, probably more people in Lowe's today than I honestly have ever seen. Uh, and I'm thankful that Lowe's is open. Uh, because we do need some plumbing supplies, electrical, we need building materials. So I thank Lowe's for staying open. Uh, but you know, what's really on my heart today, it's really stirring me, is there seems to be something more going on here. You know, we talk about what's essential and what's, what's necessary. I don't think anything is more essential than the Word of God. And I don't think anything is more necessary than that we come together and worship as the body of Christ, especially in this time. And I know there's a lot of people that will disagree with what I'm going to say, uh, but I'm not on here to, 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 to argue or anything like that. I just want to be honest with you, and I want to I tell you what the Word of God says. What does the Bible say? Is it a sin for us not to go to church? Is it a sin for especially during this quarantine? I want to read a scripture to you, and if you would share this video, I think it'll help a lot of people. And I think it's something a lot of people have on their minds today. You know, recently we heard that there were some pastors that were arrested. One in Florida, one in Louisiana for, for assembling together. They had too large a crowd and they were arrested. And so I'm disturbed by that. I'm really bothered by that. You know, when you go in this Lowe's here, believe me, y'all, it's jam-packed. The line's all the way from the, the building out into the garden center. Never before have I seen it so busy. And I just, there's something more going on here than what we're seeing. And I believe it's a spiritual implication. And I want to talk to you about that. In Hebrews, the 10th chapter, very popular scripture. One that a lot of people have thrown around and threw at me before for having church in the woods and, and different things like that. But I want to talk about it today. Let me start in verse 23. Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering. For he is faithful. He is faithful that promised and let us consider one another to provoke into love and to good works not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as manner of some is but exhorting one another and so much more as you see that day approaching i want to exhort you today because the day is approaching that day the day of the return of jesus christ and i want to exhort you today and tell you this that we are to assemble together and worship god now here's the question you say is it a sin if I go to church or not during the quarantine, I think the, the sin is, why do you go to church? What is your reason for going? Is it to get something like they are in here, here in Lowe's where the thousands of people come in to get something out of Lowe's? Or is it to go and worship God? See, there is a difference. I think one reason this crisis has come to wake up the church, we are realizing we go to church. A lot of people have gone to church to get something, to get entertained, to feel like they did God a favor, to feel like they've done what they were supposed to have done their duty. When God is saying, you honor me with your mouth, but your heart is far from me. God is saying, I want true worship in spirit and in truth. And we're looking today at a situation where if you do worship, if you do come out and gather, then you're actually not only maybe putting yourself at risk, but you could be going against the law. What the, what the people, what the governor and others have said to ban gatherings and so we've got to get real and understand why do we go to church what is the purpose is it to serve you know a lot of people say you need to serve in church you need to serve you know that's not what the bible says the bible says we're to worship god in spirit and truth when we look back in acts and we see why they went to church they gathered together in buildings they 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 broke bread they went from house to house and they were praising god they were worshiping god they served the community they served the lost they served the poor they served the widows not each other, not inside the four walls. And so we've got to get outside the four walls. The church is right here. The church is in you. There's no telling how big a church is in Lowe's right now with the Christians walking around in there because where we are is where the Spirit of God is. What? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. And so I stand here today and tell you, is it a sin that we don't assemble ourselves together and worship God? I believe it is. I believe it is a sin against God if we do not obey his word and assemble together and worship him, does that mean we have to go to a building? No. Does that mean we can't? We have to have large crowds? No. Does that mean we have to come together with one another, like-minded? Yes. I believe we are to come together and give God glory and praise. And I believe if we had more faith 
in this final hour, if we had more faith and less fear, we can not only grow spiritually, but I believe we can help others grow spiritually, and I believe some would come to the knowledge of the truth. Jesus said, sanctify them my, by my truth. My word is truth. There is nothing more important today than that this world hears the word of God. It's the only truth. It's forever settled in heaven. Jesus confirmed it. He, he confirmed that it was written. Moses' law was by the commandments of God. He, the prophets, he confirmed that. He confirmed the Psalms. And then he confirmed the New Testament by hanging on a cross and dying and rising again the third day. So, stirring in my heart today as I come into Lowe's with my wife and, and we can't even really get in there now or get out because the line is so long. It just really strikes home to me. That people are wanting normality, they're wanting familiarity, they're wanting to get out and do things, but they're afraid to go to church. Think about that. Jesus told Peter, he says, upon this rock I'll build my church, and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. Again, I'm not expecting some to agree with this. I know some of y'all are going to say, well, I, you know, we need to be sensible. We need the common sense. I think we need to obey the word of God. I think we need to show ourselves strong. I think we need to walk by faith and not by sight. I think if we can gather in lows, I think we can gather together and worship God. Now that's just where I'm at. I believe we're in the last days. I believe it's a great deception that's come and I believe Satan is trying to discourage the church. He's trying to discourage what God is about to do. And God, what is that? What is God about to do? He's about to bring a great awakening to this country. It's coming. So let's get busy praying, studying the Word of God, the truth, the infallible, infallible Word of God. Bless God. If they can gather here, you can gather where you're at and you can worship the Lord. Let the words of our mouth, the meditation of our hearts, be acceptable in His sight. O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer, in Jesus' name, amen.